welcome 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 guys rock on come in Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another episode of Motivational Monday, where each one teach one. Thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight is Monday night. It's the 1st of November. And just want to say thank you so much for hanging with me. Father, you have been so kind, perfect, gentle with us. Father, guide us through the remaining 60 days of this year. If you don't do anything else but survive, we thank you. We have done a lot. For the rest of us that desire to you, thank you for this blessed moment. Thank you for the air that fills our lungs. Thank you for our hearts. Thank you for the sanity, resolve, and sustaining us. We don't know the ins and the outs of this week, but we know you have set us apart for a time such as this. Bless us, guide us, and embrace us. So I want to talk a little bit um, on our health segment tonight. We're going to be talking a bit about, um, you know, I always tell you guys your health is your wealth. And we're going to talk a little bit today about infectious diseases. And this is from the National Institute of Health. Every year, about 23 million Americans visit a doctor's office or clinical seeking treatment for infections. Unlike many disorders, we know the exact source or of most infectious diseases. And in many cases, we have vaccine and treatment to fight them. One area or of particular concern is anticumbral resistance, a potentially deadly situation in which bacteria become resistant to most of all antibiotics drugs. We recognize this urgent threat and our scientists are working to better understand how microbes develop resist to antibi antibiotics finding new diagnostic that can more quality detect resistance and finding new antibiotic drugs and vaccine to prevent and treat bacterial infection but because no one knows when a new or re-emerging infection diseases will arise and how dangerous they may become 
we must remain vigilant and prepare with prevention strategies such as the ability to launch rapid vaccine production. Readiness for such unwelcome health surprises also involve ongoing basic research on microorganisms and the human immune system. The Ebola virus, which raved West Africa in 2013, killed more than 10,000 people and severely strained regional stability. When this crisis hit the world, home to the national largest medical research hospital, jump into action as one of four designated U.S. research hospitals to create for infected healthcare workers. Since HIV AIDS first appeared in the early 1980s, more than 70 million infections and 30 million deaths have occurred worldwide. Yet after a decade of intense work by the National Health, the Institute of Health, research has already enabled HIV infection individuals to have a normal lifespan without medication related side effects once considered unmarginable as well as how to prevent the spread of hiv if we can find and treat all hiv infection people in the united states we could prevent more than 90 percent of new infection every year an effective hiv vaccine will get us to an AIDS-free generation sooner and more importantly would help sustain the result to create a world permanently without HIV AIDS. An HIV vaccine that is even 50 to 70 percent effective. Couples without proven HIV prevention tools will be immensely effective at reducing the rate of new infection. So this is my tip today, talking about infectious diseases and stuff. So scientists are still working on um, a treatment. And as they say, you know, most of them is bacterial, I guess from the antibiotics that most of us take into our bodies. So, you know, we just have to be careful and always look to a doctor for advice. They are the geniuses and you just have to be conscious about all these diseases um, that we have um, looking around. All right. Remember, none of us is too big or too small. And, you know, it's always good to discuss your health. Right. So tonight I want to talk a little bit about trauma and uh, I think it's affecting a lot, a lot of people. And, you know, it's it should be discussed. Again, you know, I don't think anybody should be shied away from it in the sense of, um, you know, everybody seems to, again, have different situations in, um, you know, dealing with, with problems and stuff. But I think it's important and I think sometimes... It goes on to adulthood and um, that could be kind of detrimental eh? because sometimes we have unresolved issues that we don't talk about it and um, and um, you know I just think that you know it is something that we have to um, deal with and most people again don't like to speak about it right but i think it's something good so trauma therapy trauma can affect anyone at any time it cannot be defined by anyone other than the person who has experienced it in general it any major experience that overwhelms a person's ability to cope trauma therapy is a difficult process of healing painful wounds and learning to reconnect but a 
process well would. Whether it be a single event such as an assault or life-threatening accident or more persuasive experience such as child abuse or war, we can help. Trauma is not just about major event that can easily be identifiable. What affects us children is very different than which disturbs us as adults. Chronic stress, family dysfunction, bullying, early loss, poverty, racism, frequent experiences of being criticized or invalidated, and verbal abuse can be all experienced in the body as traumatic. We don't just go over these things. They stick with us until we are able to heal. Now, the reason why I think trauma therapy is very important to us as adults and children, and what I notice is that there is a generation cycle where sometimes when the child or persons grow up in a home and they tend to see the parents being abusive, whether it be sexually, mentally, verbally, abuse is abuse. And these things grow with these kids, right? And they, it, it ends up with them in adulthood. Um, even when they get married, um, they too enter the marriage or a relationship with unresolved issues and that take over the whole, you know, you can't be yourself. You, I guess, you know, the things keep coming in your mind. And that's why I always say counseling is always good um, for a person, especially who going through these kind of things. It could be bullying while they're going to school. It could be somebody saying, what? Oh, wow, you too fat. And, you know, they want to beat up on you, take your lunch money. You know, people always walking over you. I mean, trauma could be anything that affects you, right? But we have to learn how to uh, maneuver it. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I can say I think therapy, going to talk to someone could help you with your childhood unresolved issues that you take on to adulthood. And, you know, it affects you. It affects you. And, and what I see or what I'm seeing, there's a lot of lonely old people, single people um, living. Um, maybe not by choice. Maybe because of some traumatic um, life experience that they had. And it, it could be a amount of stuff because trauma, again, everyone deals with it differently right traumatic experiences can manifest in adulthood in a number of ways same thing i was saying right relationship difficulties fear of commitment and intimacy feeling of isolation and loneliness self-hatred well Let's go back to number one. When they say relationship difficulties, again, communication, I think, is the key to any relationship. Whether it be relationship have to start from young, with your mom, with your dad, um, your co-workers. Relationship building and communication go hand in hand, I think, right? And again, some people have insecurities. Sometimes you may grow up in a family and you see your dad cursing your mom. And then you go now and you have a guy and he treats you the same way. And that is generational. So you have to break the cycle. You have to say, hey, I'm not going to accept this kind of behavior. You have to know what you want, what you want to break, and what you will accept in your life, right? Fear of commitment and intimacy again fear to commit to someone maybe you grew up in a single parent home 
you never see your mom or your dad you know committed to one person or two so that rolls on to adulthood right self-hatred you watch yourself in a mirror i don't like myself my teeth my ears too big my nose too big god make you in the image that he wants you to make you and you are special you have to look yourself in a mirror and say hey i'm beautiful you know i can do it and you talk to self sometimes we have to talk to self because self now give us this reassurance what we lack in we don't have to hear or get authority from people out there to tell us we're beautiful we should know these things but again when you don't grow up right in this kind of environment that someone telling you hey i love you you're gonna grow up with your kids and not tell your kids hey i love you you wouldn't grow up um for well i'm talking from my experience and my truth is my mom and dad was married for 42 years i never see my mom and dad hug up and kiss one another back then parents was never so open to do it right but i said anytime i get a child or children i want to express this love hug them up i love you kiss them and you show them these expressions now again when you know better you do better but again you have to break the cycles so again that's why i say they go up now into relationship and don't know how to relate so you have unresolved issues that you take on so my advice is again children need love we all need love we all need love and reassuring and we we want to feel that way but again it depends on your upbringing right you may not have gotten that nurturing way but you can change it change is a process and we can start today you know and um i was talking to one of my family members and he wanted me to a word you know and i listened to him and i and all i think he wanted was a little hug to say hey everything is going to be all right sometimes we need these kind of things sometimes we don't need material thing but we need physical how are you doing today everything okay sometimes you just need to hear these things buying clothes or buying shoes or buying a handbag doesn't really fill the void if you didn't grow or nurture it so again trauma we deal with these kind of trauma right self-hatred so you have to learn to love yourself number four no this is number five depression good afternoon june terian rian thank you guys depression again trauma we everybody deals with trauma differently and sometimes again when you don't speak to someone i think talking out to someone that you could trust is always good for the soul crying is good for the soul crying is not a sign of weakness crying is a sign of letting out your emotion letting it go and feel better you know when you cry after you cry you feel so good you understand excessive drinking or substance use again trauma we don't know if a person was molested if they had a bad upbringing something and it leads people to drink it leads people to drink and they don't drink modestly but they end up being alcoholics and it have functional alcoholics i would say and it have the non-functional al alcoholics everybody deals with situation differently again this could stem from what effect or what trauma this person went through that have them this way all right sometimes too they will say okay this is the last drink i drink in and they go back again because it's just a weakness that they have you know and they think that the bottle or this feeling they get just like smoking weed 
just like taking cocaine, just like all these drugs that these, they try to numb, numb it, numb the life away, you know, because they have some traumatic experience growing up, right? Chronic anger, people who are always angry, the angry with the bull, they get up first thing in the morning, they don't even tell us sit say good morning you go on the train maybe you jump in a taxi you say good morning nobody answer you you go to work nobody wants that you know they want to know why you so happy why you so excited because they probably have a lot on their shoulders and don't know how to deal with it right but i know for me I try to break the ice sometimes when every morning when I go to work I will I always go hey good morning people of the world and they will answer and they oh they know Phyllis how you doing blessed and highly favored a blessed because I get up this morning and a highly favored because God had favor my life to see all it today you know and they will start to laugh right so sometimes it's good you never know what your neighbor experiencing right Feeling like no one understands or care, right? Some people will say, nobody don't understand me. Um, Y'all don't care about me. These are people who lacking some kind of trauma in their life. So they act out in this way. You know, you have those attention seekers. You ever have a friend and they always want to be noticed? Something wrong with them. I just always say too, like, like I have some co-workers, right? So when they come to work, most of them live single, living. So they have to talk. And they talk, talk, talk. Sometimes in the morning, you just want to have your little chat with Jesus and you want to be quiet. But then they talk. So then I realize, hey, they have no power home, so they have to come to work and they have power. So I just laugh it off like that, right? But again, you never know, right, June? You never know what the next person is thinking or what they're doing or what trauma they had, you know, that leave them feeling like that, helpless lonely you know and always blaming somebody you know what i mean so again trauma they had some type of trauma self-destructive behavior you ever have some friends like that they want to kill themselves they're thinking suicidal thoughts um you know like woman and men or boy and girl they can't leave this girlfriend um, why you're taking abuse a lover love don't hurt love don't hurt so you don't have to take no kind of abuse from anybody you know self-destructive behavior you're cutting yourself you want attention you know and that that is a type of bullying to it because it, you know and then keeping up with the joneses and then you have these friends that have iphone and my mom can't accept or give me an iPhone and, and the sneakers and you might not be able to afford that, you know. So self-destructive behavior, children act that way, even adults act that way too, you know. If, you, if, um, if I can't have you, nobody else can have you and want to, you know, hurt you, harm you and things like that, right? Memory problems. Well, we know a lot of people have a lot of memory problems, right? Um, anxiety and panic now this one is important I think because of the economy that we live in and for since the pandemic hit a lot of people cannot still comprehend we in a pandemic and they it, it give them a sense more of being like with anxiety why I say hi Jason, why I say that too is because most people never home. So guess what? You have to see your husband or your wife more, right? Or your kids, right? So it gives them this kind of anxiety that they're inside all the time and they're not getting time to go outside. And sometimes, you know, like my son, he suffers with that too because of being in the, um, in the Navy and stuff and the anxiety um, of traveling sometimes you know the the being in the air sometimes people have to take a pill to get them relaxed sometimes it's the mind you know so there's a lot of anxiety and panic people panicking oh if the lights go oh how, how will i survive you know yeah light a candle if water gone 
full of bucket of water. Some people don't know about the basic food, clothing, and shelter. Some people don't know the humility in the way how some people, you know, grow up and could accept that. So some things we would not panic to, about because we've been through that growing up and knowing the life for who come from the islands or, you know, back to basic, I would say, right? Nightmares. Some people have nightmares. Traumatic therapy, right? Um, again, you, somebody could probably try to hold you down, try to rape you, and you have all these thoughts so you can't sleep properly, you know? Or you might have witnessed somebody got killed, or you might have witnessed somebody get bounced down, or you might have a good friend who might have got shot next to you. Those traumatic behaviors, you know, sometimes they don't leave you as an adult. You will grow up and still have this trauma. You might still see your mom hitting your father. You might see your brother being molested, you know. All these things, nightmares, you get these nightmares, you can't sleep properly. Some people have sleep apnea, they can't sleep, you know. Maybe a little one or two hours, but I know I could sleep properly. But then again, we dealing with traumatic therapy, right? Chronic feeling of shame and guilt. Again, it stem from growing up, right? And you know, some people ridicule others. Some people judge us. Some people say all kind of thing about us, right? But again, if it didn't, if it don't get the foundation to be strong. And you do have and you have good parent who instill in you you are good you are good enough you understand you, you get in that feeling of you know shame or your guilt of something right healing all wounds require building safe and trusting relationship with oneself and others right Therapy can be a place where one can learn how to find safety in a world that others doesn't provide it. Same thing I was saying. My son and I was talking about this because I was telling him, you know, I want to talk about this. And he was like, you know, mom, I he goes to therapy. And, you know, he was like, he talked to his therapist and he, he, he you know, he, feel, he feels a lot of better now, you know again I, people have a big stigma about therapy and that why i just always say you know therapy i think is good for people but black people think therapy is bad i don't know why and some people will be like oh this one can't talk to me they are professionals they know they have all kind of therapists you know you know but if you give them a chance some people they can help them you open up to them. You may not open up to your partner or to your mom or to your sister or to your brother of what happened to you. But probably sitting down and chatting with somebody helps you. It helps you. It brings out whatever anxious, anxiety, anger, resentment, you know, and you become better and you, 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 you become peaceful. And I'll tell you a little story. Uh, my friend brother... Um, he's seen a therapist right now and he felt and this is a big man I'm talking about eh? in his 50s he felt that his mother loved his brother more than him and um, he couldn't understand it so he, he going to therapy now he opened up wounds and tell the therapist why he think that good night on it why he think that right and it's not that the mother loved the brother less or more but that is what he felt as a child and now he's an adult and he still feel like that but now he calls his brother and he talks to his brother one o'clock two o'clock whatever and tell him how he feels and now he's feeling a little better and that guy has been carrying that for years and years and years so that's why i say traumatic therapy again the trauma that people goes through they need to talk and let it out, right? So I will say this again. Healing all wounds require building safe and trusting relationship with oneself and others. Therapy 
can be a place where one can learn how to find safety in a world that often doesn't provide it, right? Trauma may impact every area of your life, but it doesn't have to define you. We offer individualized treatment that will help you manage trauma-related challenges and improve your relationship. If you are not ready for trauma therapy, there still are some things you can do to cope with the difficulties resulting from traumatic and adverse experience. Exercise and eat healthy. You probably already know this, but it still needs saying. The way we treat our bodies greatly affect our overall mood and sense of self. Of course, it goes both ways. If you don't like yourself very much, it's hard to treat yourself nicely. Nonetheless, caring for yourself is important for no other reason than because you deserve to be treated well. Self-care is always good. I always tell my friends, one thing in my budget, you see, is my nails and my toes have to be done. I like to do those things for me. That is my self-care. That is what I like to do. You know, I like to, well, they say I cut off all my hair, so I don't have to go and do it anymore. But, you know, self-care is always good. You feel good about yourself. You know, you, you, you dress up. Nobody say you have to go out looking. Nobody say you have to put on a pound of makeup anyhow to go to the street. But when you love and you care about yourself, you take care of yourself. Right, June? We take care of ourselves. Right? You love yourself. Learn to love yourself. The haters will always hate, as we know. But you have to learn to love yourself and keep your head up high. Right? So self-care. Spend time with others. This is an important one. While friends and loved ones may not always understand or be able to help you with your pain, just being in the presence of others can be soothing. Even just spending some time at the store or coffee shop can put a dent in the feeling of emptiness and loneliness that can often come with past trauma. June, hi Juanita, good night, good night. Oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> June, as you know, I miss my friend. She moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm very happy for her, but we used to just, she would pick me up or I'll pick up and we used to just go and have lunch and have dinner and we used to just go out and just be there and being once present, you know? And, and June will tell you, it never was an event that we really had to go to. Hi, Charlene. It, it really was nothing special, but we used to still do that. So being in the presence of, of others helped. Sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need to go for a drink. I mean, I my me time, I like it. And what I do, I know, I miss you too. I love you too, June. But my me time, sometimes I go to the mall or sometimes I will go and just sit down in a restaurant and eat. And um, I will have a drink. And what again? I have my friend Keisha. We do that every now and then. Just and one and a half. Of, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, one half away. Yes, June. I think I'll, when the weather gets well, I will be flying in and we will have that, right? But you need people in your presence. You need people who could uplift you. And that's why I say you have to surround yourself with good people. You have to surround yourself with people who loves you. And I just always say, if you're doing good, your friend had to love you. But I don't know, it has some haters. When you're doing good, they just want to vex with you for no reason. I just say there was never friends anyhow. You understand? So we just have to, don't worry about those frenemies. You know, we have to worry about the one who loves us and who consistent and who's on our lives and who have our backs. I know I could call any one of my friends and they come in. You know, so those are the people that we need around us, right? Enjoy your alone time. Although we are social animals and need people, we sometimes also just need time to be alone. This does not mean 
give in or into your urges to isolate or withdraw it's a different rather it means try to actually enjoy being in the presence of yourself take a bath give yourself a spa day play some music sing laugh roll on the floor whatever makes you feel even an ounce of joy for a moment is totally worth it and i believe that you know i like singing and i know i'm a big singer but that's my joy i get my joy in that you know i talk to myself i laugh to myself and i do like spending time by myself too but i don't isolate myself from people but again you know when you're dealing with self trauma and you're dealing with trauma therapy those are some things that you could do you know to help you out distraction and refocusing it is important to stay focused in the present and on what matters in your life sometimes the best thing we can do for ourselves is to actively distract from the pain focus on work hobbies projects helping others and attainable goals or learning something new just be careful that you don't completely avoid the pain for too long now i would say like i took up baking when it was the pandemic and my friend you know i love banana bread so i made a lot right and you know you keep focus and you find a hobby you find something you do reading singing exercising just something to keep you going to be you know and um you know you get things to distract you watch a movie and sometimes we need to really spend time with ourselves and and learn ourselves and you know it's such a a, a good um it, it's such a joy you know just um spending time and um just enjoying enjoying what you have and being thankful and you know like what i do sometimes um i i go and help out in the old people home when my friend keisha you know call me up for our assistance normally we do it around thanksgiving time and sometimes i do habitat for humanity and you know sometimes you know you, you, you just have to help the less fortunate um it's 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 good when you could give you we give without expecting anything in return you just give it and you do it from your heart you know but um yeah i, I mean i i think this was very close and you know trauma therapy is always good and you know it, it you never know what another person is going through and again we never know what upbringing that child has you know and um i was looking at this movie you on netflix and it made me teary it made me cry because it, it was about three young girls who was adopted in china and they grew up in america and they wanted to know why the parents gave them up for adoption but looking at the movie now i didn't know that china rules was one child one girl child per home so they had to give up if they had another child and it was a a female they had to give up the child so these parents put the children on bridges and they leave them by the doorstep and and you know and it was so sad and you know tears came to my eye when I think about my own life and I think about my upbringing and I study wow people who are adopted have a lot of issues too because these are the feelings that they have why my mother left me wasn't i good enough why my dad left me and you know the journalist now who was um like she now was a like private in investigator who lives in china and they contacted her to try to find the birth parents but she tried but she didn't find them but she found the orphanage that they were at and the nannies that took care of the children and i mean it was a touching story for my heart because i was thinking wow you know sometimes we see all these stars and different people you know because the girls now have a, 
had problems because they're watching these white parents and they age them so you know they reached 16 17 now and they wanted to know you know more of the culture and and all of them was from china and um you know it made me cry because it had one father who thought one of the girls would have been his daughter but when they take the dna test it came out that she wasn't and he was crying the wife was crying the girl was crying i mean it was just heart wrenching because he didn't want to give his daughter up you know but because of the rules of china and they couldn't afford and they were poor people they had to do what they had to do for survival i mean the kids now living the um, american dream life but you never know what someone the moral of the story what i get from that is you never know a person walk you never know what somebody's going through and it just shows that don't matter what creed or race we is every one of us have some sort of trauma that affected us when we were younger if you'd never had trauma good job for you but i know for me growing up i never live a traumatic life but I know I had 14, well, my father had 18 children and we all grow together. We all, uh, sometimes I try to go back and at a young age to think about my life. And what I can remember from my life, I had a great life. I used to climb Gorba tree, climb the mango tree. I used to play and um, pitch with my brothers, them tree hole, get on my bokey swell up and i crying and my dad was like no don't play with them boys but you know i was the only skill out of all the little boys after but for my childhood i had a good childhood and you know sometimes people say oh my gosh your mom has so much kids how old you used to eat we used to eat normal my mother will cook and we i had a normal life you know so sometimes you know when i think about people and what they're going through and stuff i thank god every day for every step of my life that i have went through um all my trials and tribulation as a young girl i got it that is why i could sit down here and talk to you all today you know i have experienced depression I have experienced things in my life, but I've never really um, experienced too much uh, um, physical abuse. No, mentally, yes, right? But And that's why I could sit down here and testify to people that once you are a praying soul, there is always hope. And once you think of yourself and dreams do come true and whatever you speak, in existence it comes true it might that i wake and i see a new day and there is hope out there so don't matter what kind of traumatic experience you had or you're having this too shall pass this too shall pass but you have to find a way that works for you because every human being the you know deals with things differently but i could tell you today death is something too that is very traumatic for a lot of people and no matter how long the person die we never know that feeling that you have it it's it shocks us it gets us into you know this 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 never ending feeling like it wouldn't feel better but all i can say is every day it's going to get better and you have to ask to the renewing of the mind right and i can like me i always remember my father coming home from barbados the night that he passed away and he went to barbados for his brother-in-law funeral 
and he came home and my father every night he would bring KFC for my mom right so he passed I, I used to sleep downstairs my room was downstairs and he and he passed and he, I say hi dad and he, he say hi I say come he say yeah he's going upstairs and a little while after I heard my mom saying Phyllis 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 I said aren't you calling me she said yeah so I said I come in so I run upstairs when I run upstairs now and went into the bedroom I saw my father on the bed and he was gasping froth coming out of his mouth she said go go and call your sister Yvonne and I run up Yvonne 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 come daddy like he dying you know and that that is in my head up to today and I'm 50 years old and I could remember that like yesterday so we all deal with some type of trauma and nobody knows the pain that you went through or you going through and nobody could ever tell you it's time to you know not feel sad or not feel good right my point is we all go through and we all have to live with some type of trauma, but it's always good to talk about it. It strengthens you and it gets you stronger, right? Um, I mean, and he passed away, right? So, you know, death, even on my job, it's not easy. But it's traumatizing because it comes back in your mind what you see so that's why i say all of us experience some type of trauma but i never experienced it like a young girl to take it into adulthood and then i was reading an article too about jay-z and beyonce was going to divorce jay-z for his his ways and he begs her to give him a chance and he decided to go to therapy and therapy helping them. And he has been a better father, a better husband. She had more children and things for him. So change is a process. People like to judge others, but change is a process guys. And I tell you, everybody deal with something in some point in their life, but don't let it take you and let it rule your life you can fight it you can fight it you can fight these feelings that i explain tonight to you there is hope there is light at the end of the tunnel you just have to trust and believe learn to love yourself and accept you for who you are don't try to be anybody don't try to be nobody but you you have your legacy you want to live and 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 leave a legacy what you would like to be nobody can be like phyllis green or phyllis warren nobody can be like me i am me and that is me plain talk bad manners you know but nobody don't know your journey or your story and people quick to always have something to say but i would say blank the naysayers and prove to yourself what you would like to become. What is your legacy that you would like to leave this earth with? My, that's my question for you tonight. You know, trauma, we deal with it differently. And you have to be strong. And you have to have courage. And always always know that you are good enough don't let anyone ever tell you that you're not good enough no they don't know that they're not jesus they don't know your part you know what i mean and don't worry about the naysayers because people have a tendency i always want to know they always know what's what's good for you and they don't even know what's going on in the backyard so i don't really care about people I always say that on my program. I care about me and my legacy, what I leave in. What I do on this earth, Jesus Christ is the one. He will judge me at the end of the day. And I want you guys to always remember that. What is the legacy you want to leave in this earth here? Whether it be good, 
bad or indifference. Right? Love one another. Love is good. And we have a lot we need to share. You know what I'm saying? I hope that you all enjoy the program tonight. You know, and again, every one of us deal with trauma differently. So we cannot judge anyone. We have to be there to support, to love, to hold. And what I would say is parents, love your children. Hug them up. Let them know that you are there. Sometimes all they need is a hug. What I told you all, everything is going to be okay. My nieces and my nephews just come to me because I just always tell them I love them. I want them to know I love them and they love and they're and they, they, they there. You understand? And they can talk to me anytime. My door is always open. You understand? And when my nephew called me the other night, I was sleeping. And I had to get up and I had to listen. Because he said he just want to talk. He wanted to, he want to talk to someone. You understand? And I, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not there physically to hug him. To tell him everything is going to be okay. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes a child is crying out to you, you know, for help. Big as they are. And we as adults, you have to know to choose your battles. Choose your words. Because your words could determine their lives. So, again, no matter how old they are, they just want a hug. They want you to listen to them. And I felt it. So I had to get up and I listened to my nephew. You understand what I'm saying? So you never know what somebody's going through. Sometimes they just want a listening ear. They don't want you to direct them, to give you advice or nothing. If they ask for it, they give it. But sometimes they just need you to listen to them because we never know you think I want to hear my nephew in jail you think I want to hear my nephew kill somebody no I don't want to hear that so that's why I get up and I listen to him I listen to him the night because again stress depression loneliness unwantedness we don't know how they just feel. And I'm not here to judge. But I tell him I love him. And don't let Satan the devil get in his head. You understand? Because he's love. Sometimes these women come in your life to steal, kill, and destroy our children. Our families. And all we could do is tell them we love them and let them know that they love. They need to hear it. Parents tell all the children, you love them. Don't wait till they die. Yesterday, the accident I saw in Trinidad, the car was mashed up, two bodies on the ground. You think that parent yesterday, the children leave to go on the spring to bed. You think they feel that they wasn't coming home. Love your children. What's so hard and just hugging them and telling them, I love you. Nothing is hard, guys. Parents, some parents have to wake up, man. Wake up. Wake up. Let your children be leaders and not be followers. Speeding, you know. Speeding, you know. The road is there. It's wide. Some of them narrow. You got to tell them, take it easy. So we have to pray and continue to pray for our children. Especially our younger children. Somehow they don't get it. That's why our job as parents, we have to talk till we die. No matter how old your child is, we have to talk. You have to talk. You have to talk. I know my mommy is, you know. 
My 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 son is always saying my mommy crazy. Yes, he used to tell people that in school. Say my mother is a mad woman. And big as my son is, I will talk to him. Because you know we see our children as children all the time, you know. But we as mothers, we just have to be there and and think for our kids and and talk to them and remind them that fast driving does lead to death. Bad company does lead to death. We have to talk to our children. The laws, plenty of them laws. Plenty of parents lie down sleeping in the bed and they don't know what the children doing. They're sneaking out at night while you're sleeping, going out there, following people. You gotta talk to your kids. You have to talk to the younger generation because they're not leaders, you know. They follow us. If your friends say jump off the wall, they're jumping off the wall. If your friends say, okay, pelt that car, they're pelting that car. If their friends say push down that old man, they're pushing down the old man and thinking that is a joke. So you have to talk to your kids. You have to know who your friends are, children friends are. And that I just always tell parents that. Because it have people that come and just bamboos your children mind and pour them. The weak. The weak to the wolves. So you got to talk to your children, know where they're at, know what they're about, be nosy, be inquisitive. Don't say, not my child, it's never my child, when something happened. The boy was a good boy. How the boy's a good boy and he going to rob somebody and get gunned down? What got in that? So sometimes they don't know. And some of you know the kind of things your children doing and you would not say, don't do it. And then you want to hold your head and ball, my child, my child. Yes, we make them, we make them mind, but you know what? If you train them up in the way they're supposed to grow, and they will never depart from you. Because if they see you working hard as a parent, as a single parent, whatever, I did it as a single parent. And thank God, my child ain't looking to rob and kill nobody out there. But that ain't saying he might can kill somebody, yeah? I'm just saying. You understand? He ain't gonna come and let nobody do him nothing. He will defend himself. But I'm just saying in the right way. In the right way. Alright, parents? So, pray for weak children. You gotta pray for them. Alright? Have a blessed and wonderful and safe week. Love in the house. Love in the house. Again, you're not suffering alone. We all suffer with some type of trauma. But, we here. Find a friend. Find someone who you can speak to and get over that traumatizing feeling that like a worm trying to eat you away and making you feel like you have nobody to talk to. You're not alone. All right. Have a blessed and wonderful and safe week. God's willing. November. We're going good. Have a blessed night, guys. Peace out.